our drive school of motoring. Become a safe and confident driver. Dual carriage race. And what's the reason why? What's the reason why I haven't just said right off you go? What's the difficulty? We discussed it on the way down. Um, the, class. the roads getting on and off them. Exactly right. Now, what's the point of a slip road? To flow the traffic on. Oh. Yeah. Every junction you've done now, how do you know you've successfully done a junction? If we've moved off without making another road user change the speed limit. or direction because of us. Now, what's the speed limit with your carriageway? Fantastic. Why is it a dual carriageway? What makes it a dual it's carriageway? Very good, not two lanes. It's got a central reservation. What makes a motorway a motorway though? What's the speed limit on the dual carriageway? 70. 70, yeah. That's it. So trying to move off from naught to get up to 70 without anyone doing a change of speed of direction is going to be quite tricky. Uh, so obviously, step road assists with that. What makes a motorway a motorway then? More than two lanes. Have you, you been to Kettering recently? No. No, nope. three lane dual carriageway. Going to Peter was a four lane dual carriageway. You can have two lane motorways. It's a strange question. What makes a motorway a motorway then? It's a really flippant answer, but it's not. It's a motorway because it's been classed as a motorway. Right. So therefore, different regulations apply to motorways than apply to such as um, I don't know. Can I take a push bike onto a dual carriageway? I wouldn't, but maybe. Legally? Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you take a bicycle on a, a motorway? Yeah. Nope. Can you take a tractor into a dual carriageway? Yes. Can you take a motorway? Uh, 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 no. So certain so vehicles like that, low-powered motorbikes, certain below certain CC. I think it's fifty CC. Mobility scooters. Mobility scooters. Yes, they are allowed on a. Technically, you can bring a mobility scooter onto a dual carriageway, yeah. and because they're vulnerable, you're supposed to stay in the middle. And the advice is, if, if the speed limit's more than 50, have a flashing amber light, would you honestly? <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, and the other big rule difference about motorways is certain vehicles, aren't, if there's more than three lanes or more, certain vehicles aren't allowed in the outside lane. Lorries. Lorries, coaches, anything over seven and a half tonne, I think it is. Anything that's towing something, caravans, etc. We've also discussed why that makes a huge difference. Uh, shortly. <coughs> so then, um, what's the correct speed on the slip road then? You gotta go on the slip road. What speed are you gonna take? Choose and match the traffic. Ah, this is what every fall. Match just get the speed of the traffic and then move on in. No, not technically. Um, what have we done so far? Is every hazard is have we not? slow until you got a line of sight then get um, up to speed so it's the same there's going to be no different the only fact is where so really the speed on the slip road is driving at speed so you could stop at the end of the slip road if you had to right. so if it's a long slip road if you do it faster if it's a short slip road you're going to have to be slower now what we're doing then who gets who gets rid of whom people on the slip road can wait. Yeah, exactly so you haven't got a divine right to put your floor down. Match the speed of the traffic on barging your way out. Because really, you're making a decision to go before it's safe to go. Yeah. Um. <laughs> now then. We're on a slip road. <coughs> you're probably going to be looking about, on the average slip road, you're probably going to be looking about 35, 40 miles an hour. You're probably going to be looking about third gear. Because you've got a nice lot of acceleration still in third gear. Um, and we're coming down the slip road and first of all I would check your mirrors get your signal on do you need a signal on the slip road if so why I'm driving down the dual carriageway there's a slip road there's a car isn't it a bit obvious there's a car going to be it's, got, it's not going in a rare house is it no but... what's the correct what's the rules of signaling from the very first lesson we had signal if it helps others if it helps benefits other road users so really a big problem we've got with dual carriageways is they're very very boring and people turn into like no. just stare ahead so what it's doing is like hello warning i'm coming out so it's drawing people's attention to it that's the benefit to other road users so it's not like i said at very don't think of it as left and right think of it as what benefit you're doing with that signal we've got that we've got a signal on if you don't put the signal on 
you'll probably forget about it. Time to get engrossed with the traffic, you see. Now then, we're looking for a target vehicle. Now the target vehicle is the vehicle we're going to be emerging behind. And that's our target vehicle. Now on the day like today when it's dry, how close can you get to that vehicle? It's two seconds. Yeah. Correct, and the wet it'll be four. Fantastic, yeah. So I'm looking for two second gap. I've got my vehicle. I'm still travelling at a speed though until I've got a line of sight so I could still stop at the end of the slip road. There's no point going right, go after it. You don't know what's there. Going down there, all goes well. Great, I've got my line of sight. Using that mirror, do not look over your shoulder. You'll swerve the car over the place. Get yourself tucked into the right hand side. Give yourself more visibility. Just use that mirror there. If you want to, just come across, look no further than 90 yeah. degrees. Do look at that. You'll come over the place there. Um, and if it's clear, and you've got a line of sight, so it's clear to go, you don't have to slow anymore, then put your foot down and chase after your target vehicle that you've got up to your two seconds. Get yourself in across and get that indicator off because that will never cancel on its own. It'll just stay indicating right until the examiner goes, can you turn that indicator off please? And his hand will come and do that and that'll be into your driving test. Now, if it's a target vehicle and something else comes along, which means it's no longer safe to pull in behind up to two seconds of my target vehicle, well, that's no longer my target vehicle. Immediately, that's my target vehicle. I might be slightly in front of it, so therefore, what am I going to have to do with the speed? Slow it down. So if you've started chasing off that vehicle and all of a sudden the vehicle, the safe vehicle's behind you, you got yourself into a right little sticky situation. So, there we go. Brake if necessary, bring it out. So that stays a target vehicle. If another comes along, that's a new target vehicle, so and so forth. So really, at that point, you might be slowing down the slip road until you've got your opportunity of getting on. If that vehicle, there's two lanes, if that vehicle then spots that you're wanting to come out and moves out for you, you're back to that target vehicle. If you are ahead of that target vehicle, there's no reason why he's an outside lane, you can floor it and go away from him. If he's come out and he's in front of you, don't accelerate past him, you'll be undertaking, just hold it back until he either comes in and you can come out and go that way there, because undertaking is a bit of a no-no. So it's quite nice and logical, there's always something to be aiming for. And it's after that, in, we're going on. Now then, overtaking. Not that much of a big issue. On the very first lesson, you probably were, mm, went around the car at 15 miles an hour. So you checked your mirrors, you signalled if it was of benefit, you came out, you checked your mirrors back in, you came back in. Well, really, it's not much difference with that than going past the lorry at 55 and us doing 70, really not a big problem um, so I've overtaken the lorry how do I know when to come back in if the, if I want to come back in when is it two and that's very correct how would you know that well what you can nice little reference for you when you go in overtaking lane concentrate and keeping up a lot of people start looking over here for it and start backing off the speed so you've overtaken it you start creeping back on itself especially with cars behind you keep going aim forwards and when the vehicle you've overtaken appears on the left here then that's a good enough distance ahead look over into the mirror square in the mirror because that way your peripheral vision will pick up anything on slip pros are coming across and if it's okay there then signal and just bring yourself across what do I mean by overtaking though you got, you've got a cruising lane, we got an overtaking lane, or another overtaking lane, it's three lanes or more. What do you mean by overtaking? Well, I've just overtaken the vehicle, yeah. and if there's a vehicle on a reasonable distance and I'm gaining on it, I'm overtaking it. So overtaking doesn't mean I've gone past it, it's approaching it faster that you're in the process of overtaking, yeah. so therefore stay in the overtaking yeah. lane. Now, in terms of vision, this is what's really important because it's a big game of where we're going to meet, is it safe? Uh, I think you're probably spending about 50% of your time looking ahead, 30 to 40% of your, well, 40 of your time shared between those two mirrors, 10% of your time looking in that mirror there. So you know we're always around of you. A couple of rules of thumb then. I kind of think that unless someone's done something evasive, if you've had to use a brake on the dual carriageway, you've kind of missed something, you've missed something a bit late, you should be able to spot things developing, easing off in the distance, um, trying to keep the speed up there. Now, we say we're overtaking a vehicle, if I'm gaining on it, I'm overtaking it. If checking your mirrors, if you've got a vehicle behind you and it's booming down, you go as fast as you can, 70 miles an hour, however, can't stop other people speeding. 
it's not your job to be the police. So if you've got someone coming down behind you and you're in the process of overtaking, if you can come in and you can judge it that they can come through and you can come out without compromising your speed, then do so. If it means you have to come in and brake to let them through, don't come in. But as long as you're going as fast as you can, i.e. 70 miles an hour, it's fine. It's fine to do that. Um, so, we're driving along at 70. We might have some... What sort of thing is going to slow us down? Change of speed it'll be, wouldn't it? It's a hazard. What sort of thing are we looking for? For people entering. Could be. Extra traffic coming on. Um, traffic jams ahead. Could be. Red lights up ahead, that sort of thing. Um, Particularly on dual carriageways, which is what the difference with motorways. Watch out for elephant racing. Right. Elephant racing. You see he's got a truck stop here. Yeah. One goes along at 50, one decides right. to oh, overtake yeah. at 52, one does this, and it backs up. Sometimes it's like two or three miles to overtake. So if you see anything developing there, you can just start to ease off the gas on there. My other, my own personal rule of dual carriage race is I should be able to sit in the back with my lovely cup of coffee, reading a book, and the only reason, switching off, the only reason I would know you're in a different lane is because I heard tick, tick, tick from the indicator. Best way of, best way of actually overtaking is just actually to squeeze your hand on the right, you know, just slightly contract your muscles, or just slightly pull it around that way and that way, or just pull you in here. I don't want to be doing that because that's that's like destabilising the car, a faster version of a yeah. braking on a rural bend, effectively. Okay. Uh, so we do that. We come in. We're overtaking. We're not overtaking. We're overtaking. We're not overtaking. We're looking ahead. Um, third rule is if you've only got the information. That you should speed up and slow down from the car in front. I think you're too close to the car in front. Forget about two seconds. You should be able to, at a distance, I think, you should be able to see what the car in front is seeing so you can react to him. Have you ever been in a phantom traffic jam? Have you ever heard of a phantom traffic jam? Or not on a Probably been in one. You're driving along on a motorway or dual carriageway, fast road, and all of a sudden there's red lights, red lights, everyone stops. And for about 10 minutes it stops, start, stop, start, stop, start. Then suddenly it just disappears. The traffic just oh, disappears. Right, yeah, What's caused that? I don't know. People driving too close to each other, getting the information from the car in front. One person breaks to 65, they break to 65, they break to 62, 58, and half a mile down the road it's gone all the way down to the 10, because everyone's driving too close to each other. Right. So we can avoid that by not being too close to the car in front. Uh, as a consequence of that, look out for it developing. If you see like lights going break, 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 do something about it, see if you can put a, put a break in the chain if you like. Um, from behind that, because you're not going to go any faster than the car in front. So that's it, we're going in, going off. The only difference with motorways is you've probably got a third lane, additional lane, exclusively for fast cars, motorbikes, that's why the cars go faster. Um, different signage of motorways, a bit more, it's better, more signage, so we've got smart motorways, and we do motorways, we'll look at that in more depth anyway. We've got time to do motorways while we're here. Um, so if a slip road to get us on the way away, what's a slip road or dual carriage? What's a slip road as a slip road to get us off? Exit. Mm. Without interfering with the speed of traffic on the road you come from. Yeah. So this is what we do. Um, I don't know why it's blue. It's blue. On a motorway, on a dual carriageway in a road, you'll get a sign half a mile out to say there's a slip road coming up. Generally half a mile. On motorways, it tends to be a mile. Now even at 60 miles an hour, how far, in terms of time, how far are you from the junction at half a mile? What do you mean? Well, okay. in that, in the actual if time. I'm doing 60 miles an hour, I'm yeah. half a mile junction uh, sign, nice. how, how ter in terms of time, how far am I away in terms of time from the... 30 seconds. Well done. Yes. I was about to feed. I was about to feed you. Don't overthink it. Yeah. So you're only thirty seconds away. See the planning board. Get yourself back over. Don't do any more overtaking. There will be these markers on the way down. Three, two, and one. Um, Is that the hundred yards? Yeah, or three hundred yards, two hundred yards, one hundred. We can use them as a reference. You see, not for that. But three, check, we should be checking your mirrors. Anyway. Have a good check all the way around your mirrors there, 300 yards out. Two, pop on your signal. One, sort your speed. It could even be speeding up if there's stuff behind you and you've got a clear slip road ahead of you. And then we come off the slip road. Now then, 
Gosh, I probably sat in this very spot about 480 times having a similar conversation I'm having with yourself there. For the first 200 times of this, I used to let people sort of see if they can bring the speed down to an acceptable speed for the end of the step right onto the roundabout. When we did roundabouts, if you're this sort of distance from that roundabout there, making sure you're slow until you can go speed, what speed, what gear would you normally be in about this point, do you reckon? I think about to Corby, yeah, if you're that distance, that's a roundabout. Fourth? Fourth 40? gear? Yeah, 40 like... miles an hour, here? What, oh, for that? Yeah, 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 not that one, there, no, no, one up there maybe, but if it's um, on here. Second 20 or third? Yeah, maybe, probably second gear, probably about 50 miles now, slowing down until the road opens up for you. Great. Left to their own devices, what was the average speed oh, my students, before I decided to change my way because I thought my life was worth more than a... So I'm going to be like 5 or 40. About 48. Oh. Yeah, because have you ever driven along on the dual carriageway? It goes average speed cameras, average road works. For everyone brings it down, though. Wow. Um, Interesting. Yes. Don't do that. Um, That'll go viral. <laughs> that's one thing to do. Yeah. That's, a, that's, one, that's, that's one for the family album, isn't it? Um, what, was, what was I talking about? I was nearly killed. Um, the speaker. Oh, the yes. Album. You got to slow down to 50, and it feels like it's dead slow. If we could get out, even walk faster. Yeah. You've been in the traffic, the phantom traffic jam, stop, 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 you speed up to 30 and all of a sudden it feels really quick. Now hang on a minute, how can 50 be, how can 50 be fast, uh, how can 50 be slow and 30 be fast? It's because it's that change of speed, that's the big thing. Um, now people slow down to 50 from 70 off the real carriageway and it feels slow when well, it's not. And I used to let them go to about here and bring the speed down to what it should be, just a bit of a shock to the system and go, that's the speed we need. Felt a bit fast, didn't it, up to that point? Yes, it did. Three-phase braking has put a stop to that. As soon as you're off and you see the roundabout, check your mirrors, get your indicator on if necessary, off the gas for half a distance, and your brain starts engaging in the process of slowing it into it, so it's got done away with that. <coughs> so that's it, really. Now at this point, I say to students, would you like to give it a go, or would you like me to give you a sh give it a show, do a demo? And what's your answer? No. So we're going to go that way. Second exit left. Checking my mirrors, slowing it down. That's it. We get ahead of that car. Signaling left. Up to third gear. Signal. Get yourself tucked in there. Looking for a target vehicle. So that, that's like a great one, isn't it? So it's now got a line of sight. Chasing it after into fourth gear. Just holding it there. See the elephant racing up ahead there already. Bring myself out. It's coming off the gas, it's all stopping up there. Checking my mirrors around. I'll take that out so I'm going to go faster than that lorry up there. We're intending to anyway. You see, off we go then. There we go, down here then. I'll talk you through this on this the first time, okay? Up the third gear. Stay over to the right hand side. Pop on those tricky mirrors and pop a signal on. We'll look at uh, bring stuff over a little bit. Nice and adjacent to that. Looking for a target vehicle. What do you reckon? That, that DJ's at the moment. Yeah, that's fine, isn't it? Looking over there. Yeah, plenty of time to get the fourth gear. Bring yourself out then at the earliest opportunity. Bring yourself out there. Good stuff. Get rid of that. Oh, these will never cancel. Very good. That's great. Thanks for watching. For more regularly uploaded videos, don't forget to like and subscribe.